The believers of three faiths, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam, consider Jerusalem a sacred holy land. The Church of the Holy Sepulchre, where Jesus is said to have been buried, attracts many visitors from around the world. The Wailing Wall, a remnant of the foundation of the Jewish temple that was destroyed 2,000 years ago, is considered by Jews to be the most important site for prayer. Dome of the Rock is said to be where the Prophet Muhammad ascended into heaven. Jerusalem is the city where all these sites exist within a small walled off piece of land, about one square kilometer. One of JICA's official supporters is Tsuyoshi Kitazawa, former Japan national football team member. The purpose of his trip was to participate in a football-related event for refugees and children living under harsh conditions in Palestine. He stopped off in Jerusalem on the way to the West Bank city of Jericho. He was impressed by the profound history of the city and was overwhelmed by the fact that it is a holy land for three regions. Jerusalem is also a flashpoint in the territorial dispute between Palestine and Israel. Furthermore, a new problem has arisen. The separation wall that Israel has been building as a security measure. This wall has cut off not only roads, but also movement of local people and caused a great socio-economic burden in the Palestinian society. What benefits could Kitazawa's activities bring to this unstable region, Palestine and Israel, where little sign of peace can be found? We're about an hour from Jerusalem by car. The West Bank city of Jericho is 350 meters below sea level, the lowest elevation of any city on earth. It is also said to be the oldest example of human urban civilization, with a history reaching back 10,000 years. With its mild climate and abundant water, it has excellent prospects for the development of tourism and agriculture. That is why JICA has set up a regional development program here to help peace flourish in the Middle East. Along with conducting surveys on agriculture and tourism, Japanese experts are playing a major role in a project aimed at improving the area's solid waste management capacity. They are moving forward by conducting seminars and surveying waste disposal facilities with the aim of providing a reliable waste disposal system. In addition, the Maternal and Child Health Project has developed the first Arabic version of Maternal and Child Health Handbook in collaboration with Japanese and Palestinian experts and is distributing it in Jericho first. The project plans to further promote the handbook to all the mothers in Palestine. This is the city where Kitazawa plans to conduct football classes and participate in a friendly match. This event is the result of the JICA office wondering if there wasn't some way to give the Palestinians something fun to talk about, as they live under harsh conditions with almost no amusements. 
they summoned Kitazawa and suggested organizing the town to put on a football-related event. Thanks to the enthusiasm of the JICA staff, the event became a reality. It happened to be the middle of Ramadan, the holy month of Islam, when Muslims do not eat or drink between sunrise and sunset. However, after the sunset, the family joins together for a meal called iftar. Kitazawa was invited to an iftar. Mr. Mohammed, who invited Kitazawa to share this meal, teaches English to secondary school pupils. Married with three children, Mohammed was once a JICA trainee and visited the Japanese city of Kitakyushu. Of course, no alcohol was available, but a wide variety of food was served. The family was warm-hearted and fun-loving, to an extent that one would never imagine from the coverage of Palestine in the Japanese news media. Oldest son Majdi said that he wants to become a doctor. We asked the oldest son Majdi what he thought should happen between Israel and Palestine in the future. On his first evening in Palestine, Kitazawa was made aware of the situation in this region through his own unanswerable question. Everyone wants peace and everyone believes that peace will someday come to this region. Now we're near Jericho, 398 meters below sea level, near the location of the world's deepest salt lake, the Dead Sea. Its salt content is 10 times normal, up to 35%, so even non-swimmers can float easily. Kitazawa walked into the Dead Sea for the first time and brought a football along. In this region, known for many conflicts, the Dead Sea is quite a restful place. The time here became a period of respite for Kitazawa before the main event. The main event was scheduled to take place at Jericho Stadium, built with funds provided to the United Nations by Japan. It was time for the football classes for children. The children from the football club finally gather together. These children, who have hardly ever played football on turf, seem rather anxious about how it will all turn out. The class begins after Kitazawa greets the children. He has them all do the same moves in order to practice concentrating. He also has them practice passing two balls between two players so that they have to watch both the motions of their partners and the motion of the ball. He impresses upon them the importance of regularly maintaining verbal communication. Then Kitazawa teaches the children how to play rock, paper, scissors. The cry is Jericho. Ah, so. 
Once the children learn rock, paper, scissors, the anxious expressions disappear from their faces and change to smiles reflecting pure enjoyment of football. Even though they can't understand each other's languages, football narrows the distance between Kitazawa and the children. Even after the practice session was over, the children didn't want to let Kitazawa go, and he responded by staying on. The children's smiles and happy voices filled Jericho Stadium until late in the evening. The Akabat Java Refugee Camp was established in the city of Jericho in 1948 and is now home to about 7,000 people. About 70,000 people lived there at the time it was founded. Kitazawa visited the camp with Ambassador Katori, who would be participating in the football event. They were warmly welcomed by the pupils of the elementary school in the camp, all of whom were looking forward to the event. Kitazawa was surprised at the attitude of these refugee camp children, whose liveliness and good cheer gave no hint of their harsh lives. A large crowd gathered in the stadium on the last day of the event. PLO leaders and the mayor of Jericho were also in attendance. The stadium grew quiet for the performance of the Palestinian national anthem. The main event of the final day was a match between a select team from Jericho and the Jaika team. Of course, Kitazawa participated, as did the PLO official, the ambassador, and Jaika Jordan resident representative. Cheers poured out of the stands in support of players who rarely get to wear a uniform. Once the match began, it was serious business. It began with a shot by the Jaika team. Followed by a fierce attack from the Jericho team. Then came another shot. Everyone was at a fever pitch. When the game was over, it didn't matter who had won or lost. Football had united the hearts of the Palestinian and Japanese people. Everyone who was present in the stadium could feel it. This event was a success, thanks to the combined efforts of Palestine and Japan. Kitazawa's visit brought Palestine and Japan closer to each other. This may have been only a minor success, but for the Palestinian people, it was the first cheerful news that they had had in a long time. <laughs> いや、もう
愛しな暮らしと、えー、心を、えー、通いそしてまた皆さんの、えー、幸せに対して、えー、サポートしていきたいと思います。ありがとうございます。We must continue working together with the Palestinian people so that this success contributes to peace and stability, even if only in a small way. Here's hoping that peace will come to this region.